Easter's in full bloom at Whole Foods Market with great deals on spiral cut bone in ham and leg of lamb, both crowd pleasers. Round out your spread with quiche, deviled eggs, and delicious catering platters from prepared foods. Oh, and remember to pick up a Whole Foods Market bunny cake from the bakery. Strap for time? They cater too, with delicious options available without the effort. Find hundreds of Easter deals and delights now at Whole Foods Market. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2511. Metabolic Damage, Digestive Health, and Fat Loss by Dr. Jillian Tita with jillfit.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, your host. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I act as your very own personal narrator and read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online. But with that, keep this intro nice and short and get right to it as we optimize your life. Metabolic Damage, Digestive Health, and Fat Loss by Dr. Jillian Tita with jillfit.com. Digestion certainly is not the most elegant topic to discuss, yet discussion becomes necessary and warranted when we consider that digestive health plays a major role in body composition, overall health, whether you are prone to be overweight, and even if you are having difficulty losing fat in problem areas like the hips, thighs, and glutes. Once we get over the, that's a weird topic vibe, digestion is actually quite cool. We tend not to think too much about digestion until something goes wrong with it or it begins impacting our goals. I want to outline several scenarios and their potential solutions and things to consider. Your body is only as healthy and strong as your digestive system is, period. One of the major jobs of the gastrointestinal tract is the breakdown, absorption, assimilation, and elimination of food and all of the macro and micronutrients, including vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, and so on, that your food contains. If one of these links in the chain becomes broken or impaired, the rest of the chain suffers, and thus, the health of the entire body. Even if you are eating the very best nutrition you possibly can, if you cannot digest, absorb, and assimilate that nutrition, you are missing out, and your health and body composition will not be as good as it can be. What does normal digestion look like? Warning, I'm going to talk about poop here for a second. Ideally, you will be moving your bowels at least once per day. Your poop should be well-formed and easy to pass, without blood, mucus, or undigested food in it. You should not feel bloated or overly gassy, You should not experience reflux, indigestion, pain, or cramping on a regular basis. If you are, something is amiss. Basics of digestive health. Digestive health is the result of your nutrition being appropriate for you. That is, identifying and avoiding food sensitivities for you. Beneficial bacteria, about four pounds of them, live in our guts and execute a myriad of functions for us related to digestion. Interestingly, our gut bacteria even play a role in our body composition. Some strains of bacteria predispose us to be more overweight. Isn't that so unfair? Digestive enzymes, bile, and stomach acid should all be present in enough quantity to be able to break down macronutrients into small enough pieces to be assimilated. The lining of the gut should be strong, have good integrity, and not be a source of inflammation. The nervous system of the brain, the enteric nervous system, or second brain, should be functioning smoothly to promote optimal and timely elimination. All of these pieces working in sync help your body metabolize and use the nutrition from your food to help you look and feel your best. Constipation. Let's face it, it happens. For optimal fat loss, constipation absolutely should be addressed. For targeting trouble areas, Tackling constipation is a must. I'll back up a few steps. The liver filters your blood, removing things like cholesterol particles, compounds of metabolism, inflammatory molecules, and spent hormones. It's the job of the liver to filter out hormones like estrogen, package them up to be excreted, and then send them to the GI tract so we can poop them out. Guess what? Our colon, affectionately called the large intestine, has a blood supply. So if you are not pooping every day and your stool is just sitting there in your colon, all of those hormones get reabsorbed back into general circulation. Then 
it ends back at the liver. The liver, meanwhile, is dealing with today's estrogens and other spent hormones and inflammatory compounds. Now, it has to deal again with the stuff it dealt with yesterday or the day before. So when the bowel becomes constipated, the liver becomes constipated, and your estrogenic burden goes up. The fat receptors on all of our troublesome areas, butt, hips, thighs, are highly sensitive to estrogen. Estrogen stimulates them and helps them hold on to fat. What this means is that when we are not pooping daily, we are more estrogenic, and our trouble areas, not to mention overall fat loss, become resistant to change. Solution. Ensure that you're eating adequate healthy fats, fibrous veggies, and are hydrated. You want to aim for at least three liters of water every day. Try to avoid those foods that are inherently constipating, for some that may include gluten, dairy, grains, and bananas. Consider taking a probiotic each day as well. Metabolic damage. Chronic dieters, cardio enthusiasts, and those prone to bad sleep and high stress can experience metabolic damage. People with metabolic damage are more prone to things like irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, which can manifest as alternating loose stool and constipation, stomach pain, and bloating. As dysfunction in the gut ensues, optimal assimilation and processing of nutrients is impaired, making it even harder to repair metabolic damage. Solution. A gut restoration program is at the foundation of any metabolic damage protocol. This entails finding and eliminating foods you are sensitive to, and also making sure you don't have candida, bacterial, or parasitic infections. You can also bump up your beneficial gut flora by considering taking a probiotic each day, taking a plant digestive enzyme with meals, and consider a glutamine-based product to heal the lining of the gut. Are food allergies making you fat? They sure could be. Eating foods that are not ideal for our body create inflammation, which brings water to the belly area, which can lead to bloating, disrupts hormonal signaling, irritates the gut lining, making absorption of nutrients difficult, and can even downregulate our fat-burning hormonal machinery. Solution? Find and eliminate food allergies if you suspect they may be impairing your fat loss efforts. This can be done through an elimination and challenge diet, or through blood tests. Most common food allergies include gluten, dairy, tree nuts, citrus, strawberries, soy, and eggs. You just listened to the post titled Metabolic Damage, Digestive Health, and Fat Loss by Dr. Jillian Tita with jillfit.com and I'll be right back with my commentary. When you're hiring, it feels amazing to finally close out a job search. But what if you could get rid of the search and just match? You can with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it filters out incompatible applicants. So when you're hiring, the process is much faster and you only have to consider applicants that are already likely to be a great fit. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash health. Just go to indeed.com slash health right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Going back to the idea of, as today's author called it, poop, and how often we should have bowel movements. For example, people will ask me, if I have more than one bowel movement a day, is that bad? I remember when I was in school, one of my classmates asked our professor, how many bowel movements per day is ideal? The professor responded, Ideally, one bowel movement per meal you consume. In response to that, my classmate blurted out, Six times a day? 
it turns out that it's not really necessary to have a bowel movement in response to every meal. Instead, based on lots of research, once a day is perfectly healthy. In fact, going more or less frequently than once a day may be a sign of an underlying condition, just as today's author, Dr. Tita, described. All right, that's another edition of Optimal Health Daily. I hope you're having a great weekend. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll be back here tomorrow as usual. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.